Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for the 2015 documentary film Smoke and Mirrors, the story of Tom Savini. And this apparently is the first time that there's been a documentary on Tom Savini, who, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy that it's taken this long because of how important this one individual has been to the horror community and horror film, the horror industry. Uh, I mean, let's go over it. Director, actor, stuntman, special effects. Obviously, the last thing is what he's most known for and really pushed the envelope and have gotten us to the point that we are today, pretty much. Without him, I don't know if someone may have stepped up and kind of filled a little bit of that place, but he was the guy, pretty much, along with some others like uh, Rob Bottin and, um, and uh, sorry, Greg Nicotero and a few other ones. But Anyway, let's get into this individual film. This, when I was watching it, I got it as a screener copy from Shudder, so thank you, Shudder, for allowing me to have this ahead of time. It is hitting Shudder Monday, December 16th, which, when I'm dropping this video, is in two days. I would recommend people check it out. This is a no... I mean, it's a no-spoilers review, but I am going to say a few small things about uh, Tom Savini himself and his life, so that's a little spoilery, but... For the most part, there's tons to the documentary. I'm not spoiling the whole movie. Watch it, especially if you're a Tom Savini fan. But actually, even if you're not, if you're just a horror genre fan in general, you should watch it because he's so important to the horror genre that, you know, you, you, should, you should know what impact he's had. And it's, it's an interesting story. So it was directed by Jason Baker, who's actually worked in special effects before. So, good on him. He hasn't directed a whole lot, and actually, unfortunately, I think it kind of comes through a little bit in this actual film. There are a bunch of kind of technical issues with the film, but once you get moving with it, you, you start to not really realize it because you get so wrapped up in the actual story of it. The other thing to keep in mind is this is a very low-budget film. So keep that in mind. It is important to keep things like that in mind when you're watching the films. You can't expect everything to be Hollywood budget quality. I mean, if this was a documentary that had like a $100,000 budget or more, you could expect a lot more from it. Now, I don't know what the total budget was for it, but I do know that he got $1,638 on Kickstarter through a campaign for it. I think it was backed by like 54 people or something like that. And he was only asking for $1,000 to make this documentary. So it is very low budget. So keep that in mind when you watch it. That does come through. But, you know, it's not really what this documentary is about. It's not about, you know, making things look super cool and all about the directing of it and everything. It's about the content and it's about Savini himself. And he is interviewed in this at length. And that's what makes this documentary worth it. It's all about Tom Savini telling his stories directly from his mouth. And that's what, you know, has so much power here. Uh, my favorite big names in this, there are a bunch of big names in this who show up. My favorites, uh, Doug Bradley shows up in it, Greg Nicotero, George A. Romero, Tony Todd, and Sid Haig. Those are my favorites. There are other ones that I like, but I just, I didn't want to name all of them. I just wanted to name some of my faves. So there they are. Um, there's kind of like this weird set up in the beginning where they're kind of like, this is a warning, this is all about Tom Savini's life, and blah, blah. And um, it, it's staged, it's scripted, and it feels like it doesn't go with the film. And it feels like it's just a very weird way to start everything, and I don't think it works. It's too over the top. It's too um, normal filmy. You know, it, it, they're trying to be too th theatrical with it, and this is not theatrical. It's a documentary. Like, they're, they're very different things. So I, I don't think that was a good choice to open it like that. It doesn't fit, and it feels odd. Um, I like the start where they're actually just, they're kind of going through showing pieces of reel from films that Savini's been on, been in and sets that he's been on. So it kind of like shows him doing everything. It shows him, you know, doing some acting, some stuntman stuff, his putting his special effects together, things like that. I like that. And it's kind of a montage of that. Now, the music is over the top. And that's one of the things in general for this film is that the music isn't the greatest. It is very kind of cheesy, corny, cheapy, over-the-top music a lot of the time, but at, at some point you just kind of aren't even really hearing it so much, and you kind of get over that. Um, one of the things I really liked in this is that Savini called theaters houses of magic, which I've never heard anyone say that, and, you know, 
it's not like anything earth shattering but when he said that i was just like oh that's i really think it's cool that he kind of puts it that way and for me personally like i kind of feel that way for me going to the theater is a way to step out of reality and to um hold yourself captive to escape reality and watch an entire story because you can watch movies at home but it's not the same because there are always things there to distract you you know someone needs your attention you get a phone call there are always you know things that need to be done around the house so you're thinking about that and you're like oh i'm watching this film but i should go do some laundry or i need to clean up this or you know make dinner whatever when you go to the theater you're captive you can't go anywhere else you can't do anything else you can't answer your phone or text on it well i mean you can but you definitely should not people hate you for that including me i really hate you for that if you do it in the theater so it's just more of an actual experience it is magic in a sense so i like that he said that uh it's always cool to get the story of how someone like savini was influenced throughout his life uh and like i said like that's the strength of this documentary is that they got savini they got him to sit down and and be interviewed and he just he talks you know he gives his story he talks about his feelings about things the good things he went through the bad things he went through how he's been influenced throughout life um very interesting uh, you know how important Savini has been to horror, but it's important to have films like this as a reminder for future generations. Yes, I've known for a long time Savini is a big name. He's very important, but you, you kind of forget those types of things. You forget to what degree until you sit down and watch something like this, and then you're reminded, yeah, this person is super important, and he, and usually even more so than you even realized because you can't sit there and always remember everything a person's done so it's really cool to sit down and watch this and, and I feel like also sitting down and watching something like this is paying homage to that individual and giving them respect saying you know I'm willing to devote this portion of my life to learning about his life because of my respect for who he is and what he's done and I think a lot of people should watch it for that reason Tom's level of creativity with a low budget is unbelievably inspiring in this film and that's kind of one of the points they make at in in one section and you know he talks about it it's just basically like you know he kind of came from not having a whole lot so he always had to do a lot with a little and that's how he approached doing special effects and when you start like seeing that in his work you're just like wow you know the amount of creativity that came out of such few resources is pretty amazing uh there's an awesome part in here when tom t tom sorry Tom. Tom talks about uh, his experience with directing his remake of Night of the Living Dead, which I've read about so many times being such a, a horrible sore spot for him in his life because he had such high hopes for it. He loved the project and things didn't pan out the way they were supposed to and the reception wasn't, wasn't that great, so it's a sore spot for him. But I love the portion of this where he talks about it and he gives you the information on what was supposed to be, how it was ideally supposed to come out. And I love that he gets that chance to kind of reclaim it in a sense by letting everyone know through this documentary that this was the vision. This is what you were sp supposed to get out of the film. Unfortunately, you didn't get that because, you know, the studios is one of the big things. That's what happens. Um, it's great to hear Tom had an awesome time making the film from Dust Till Dawn. And that's a personal thing for me. I love From Dust Till Dawn. I feel like that's a film that gets panned way too often. It is one of my favorite Tarantino films. I know it's kind of weird to say, but I love it. And a lot of people hate it because it's this mix. It's like the whole first half of it is a different film than the last half of it. And it feels like the vampire stuff just comes out of nowhere. Well, I think that's genius. Because if you were experiencing, experiencing that in life that's how it would be you wouldn't know that the vampire invasion is coming it would just happen and you'd be like what the hell then you deal with it so i love that film and savini in it is great so it was awesome to hear that he kind of gushed about you know being involved with that film i love that he had a good time with it there's a big piece of information in this film uh, i'm not going to talk about it i'm just going to say there's a big piece of information that tom savini gives towards the end that was the first time he had said it kind of publicly was in doing his interview with us. So I don't know if since this documentary has been around since 2015, I don't know if that information's already gotten out. I had not heard it before, but you know, at least watch it for that. I would say, 
Uh, it makes you think about the inspiration importance of people like Tom Savini, who then kind of keep the horror industry going with inspiring other more t more and equally and a little bit less talented people who step into the genre because they see someone like Savini. They can use him as a role model and say, man, that's awesome. He does a great job. I'd love to be able to be like that. And it just kind of pushes people. And then, you know, by having someone like that who can be an awesome role model, and one of the ways he does that is he created his special effects school, which is a huge thing. How many people do that? Um, it's great because it churns out more people to keep this industry going that obviously he has a lot of uh, love for because he spent a lot of time with it. Um, they have this one, uh, they have a few problems. I'm, I'm going to the, after the actual documentary, just talking about some of the technical problems, but then I'll talk about some of the good stuff because that's how I want to end it because overall I enjoyed the film. So one problem they actually have is there are a few inter interview portions in the beginning where they don't actually give you names of people. Now, I know who the people are, but not everyone's going to know that, so that's just like a small thing. Um, there are a few times when the audio is a little bit rough. There was one time where you could tell they grabbed a segment of interview with Savini that was actually through Skype, and it doesn't sound that good, so that kind of throws you off. But then there's also, when they're interviewing different people, the audio sounds different. So, like, there's one that sounds kind of muffled. Uh, there's some that the audio sounds perfect. So it, it's just audio inconsistency, which, you know, I, I chalk that up to, A, it was low budget, and B, this individual, um, Jason Baker, doesn't have an extensive uh, amount of experience with doing, you know, with directing film. So, you know, it's forgivable for sure. Uh, like I said, the music, I didn't really like the music use in this, but like I said, you just kind of get used to it and get over it. The audio fluctuations, you can tell it's a low budget film, um, and you have to keep that in mind. That's the thing. Keep that in mind and just understand that no matter what budget someone has, the fact that they do a film is what's important. And the fact that Jason Baker pulled it together, I'm sure he put a lot of work into this, and he was able to get Tom Savini for this and other people to be interviewed, like that's a lot of work. And it's all for, you, it feels like it's all for the love of Savini and who he is and what he's meant to the horror genre. And that is what's amazing about this film. And it just oozes of that. And I love it for that reason. I, I love that aspect of it. Is it the greatest documentary I've ever seen? No. Is it one, is it up there? No, it's, but is it good? Yes. It has its flaws. But like I said, you got to remember, it's very low budget. You got to forgive it for those things. It is edited well. That's another thing. The editing with it is quite well done. So that's a big plus. Um, like I said, what makes the documentary? It's Tom Savini. It's all the focus on him. Honestly, if you didn't, need, if you got just no one else interviewed for this, it still would have come out quite well because Savini is very engaging. And I don't know, you just get lost in, in how he tells his story. And that's a great thing. Um. So I just put a thing at the end. It's always cool when you see someone like this or you hear from someone like this who uh, you, you see similarities between them and yourself. And, and that's just kind of cool and inspiring. So I just kind of wrote down a few similarities between Savini and myself. Um, he said something about being super conscious about the size of his nose when he was growing up. If you, if you didn't notice, yep, I can, uh, I can feel him on that one. Been there. Uh, he was a drama geek. I was a drama geek in high school. I, I, I didn't do a whole lot of actual like state stuff on the stage. I was more of like a techie behind the scenes, you know, set stuff and audio and things like that. Um, journalism. He did journalism in college. I did German journalism in high school and post college, uh, involved with film. I mean, obviously he's like crazy successful involved with film. I have been involved with film, not just doing, you know, my reviews here, but, uh, I made some some short films, writing, script writing. I did some directing, acting, editing, all that stuff. And he likes cats. You get that at the end. He's got two cats at the moment who are really cool. He's a cat dude, and I am also a cat dude. Because people who have watched enough of my videos know that my cat roams around during this and will yell and whine because she's not getting attention from me. So, And actually, I do have to throw this out there because... It connects in a sense. While I was watching the documentary, my cat was sleeping in my lap. So she was around for the Tom Savini documentary. So 
I have to, this is one of those films that when I give the five star reading, I have to do it twice because I have to do it as looking extremely objectively. If I didn't know what the budget was or anything, how would I rate this film? So if that was the case, I would give it two out of five stars because there are a bunch of technical issues, the audio thing, um, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, but if I'm taking into account the low budget, I'm going to give it a three and a half stars for sure. And that's my personal rating for it too, is a three and a half stars because obviously I know it was low budget and I really like the film. So I would definitely recommend it to people. Like I said, on shutter December 16th, which is this Monday. And, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Once again, thank you shutter. Thank you, Jason Baker for making this because, like I said, I can't believe someone didn't already do a documentary about Tom Savini. It's such a no-brainer. But then this also raises the point that there are a bunch of other icons out there, or like quasi-icons within the horror community, that should have documentaries done about them. So hopefully things like this inspire other people to do the same thing. So thanks everyone for checking this out. Uh, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe if you like anything I do. That's the best way to repay me. You can put some comments down here. Um, if you just want to talk about Savini or if you want to, you know, talk about your feelings about the film after you see it, whatever, you can do a like, but the big thing is to subscribe. I really appreciate that. Anyway, thanks for checking this out and until next time, keep it brutal.